it's unboxing time. Meta Quest Elite Strap. This was sent to us by Meta along with a few other accessories, although not their full lineup, unfortunately. Feels like a thicker version of the original. Same flexibility in the rear, same top strap that's not sort of cushioned or anything like that. Same clicky crank. There's some play in the button. I wouldn't say it cheapens it too bad. For the first timers who haven't taken this thing apart yet, it's a little scary. This thing pulls straight out. Feels like it's gonna break every time you do it. But as you can see, it's just plastic tabs are all that hold it in. It would probably feel less scary if you were pulling directly on this piece, but the problem is you're kind of pulling on the part that moves like this, and that part just never feels as solid as you can hear. Top strap is real easy, just on Velcro. Side straps are a little scary if you're new to it. Put your thumb behind it on this bit of flat plastic here and then just bend it off. They, of course, did the one thing that I always value in any strap that uses a top strap is they put a little bit of it without Velcro because these things are just kind of tricky to get through here and if some of it doesn't have Velcro making it stiffer, it's usually a little easier to slide it through. Side snap on. Actually, those snap on even more comfortably than the Quest 2 ones did, I would say. those. Those feel pretty solid. Just like the old one, you can hold it from the rear here and it holds the whole thing stable. It makes the whole thing feel more premium because if you've had it for a while and you have the cloth one, you pick it up and the cloth is flaccid flopping around. It just doesn't make it feel super premium. When you go to put it on, it's good to have the top loose because you want to feel out where you want it to land on the back of your head and then pull on this just enough that you feel like it's starting to lift it off your face a little bit and that's where you want to attach it. A lot of people leave it too low and doing this will make a little less weight on your face. It's a very normal elite strap feeling. It holds onto your eyebrows and your cheekbones, of course, rather than like a halo type strap, which is my preference. And then you always have this top strap running down the middle. You can't unfortunately detach the top strap, but I do feel like you could with how much more balanced the quest is, you could actually get away without having a top strap. If you really want to, you could snip it off. Early first impressions, it feels a lot like the Quest 2 one. So speaking of how sturdy is it, okay. I don't know where my safety goggles are, so I'm just using the old fashioned, uh, what, is, what does John call them? Safety squints. Safety squints. The old Elite straps broke more with time rather than abuse as we showed you before. But I will say off the bat, it's got good flexibility. I feel okay about it. I've got to spend some time testing and gaming with it. So I'll come back at you shortly. Three days later. It's a fine version of the Elite Strap. It is the original. It is one of the most expensive ones out there. It does its job. It really does hold to your face well, if that's what you're looking for, for stability. The gear feels crappy. When you're actually turning it, it's fine. It's just the slack in it that's kind of shocking. The top strap could use a pad. There's a lot of things that could improve, but it does work. If you have one of these and you got it, because it was what was there when at the time you bought it. It's fine. I personally wouldn't recommend going and getting one because we just don't know. The original Elite Straps had a lot of problems. A lot of them were breaking. And although, yes, we can bend this thing pretty well. It's pretty flexible. I was able to do that with one of the old ones and they were having issues with suddenly breaking. The third party market is going to have so many more options for lower prices that personally, this isn't something I would buy. Zyber Elite Strap obviously taking some inspiration from the original Meta Elite design and also looking similar to what Kiwi's done. They got a joint here to help make this thing easier to put on. We got the top pad, like the Kiwi. Apparently it still does that thing where it just reels in. <laughs> A sticker in the back that says, pay attention to the left and right to make sure you don't do this thing upside down. What kind of moron would do that? That's backwards. Oh, that would be why it was so hard. Oh my God, the whole thing's upside down then. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm gonna undo this part because this feels like it's way too small already. Oh, oh, that's weird. Ow! That's what I get for growing my hair out for Halloween. Struggling a bit to find the sweet spot on this one. Feels like I gotta take it a little further down the back of my head. The joint does allow us this feature, which is always nice if you need to pop up. Now with the pass-through being so much better, I kind of don't really think you need to do that as much. I mean, I know some people have felt differently about it, but for me, I can even like see my phone pretty well through pass-through. It's 951, I got 85% of my battery. So it's pretty straightforward for me to just use pass-through, but some people might like that they can still do this, especially if they're going over their computer with fonts or smaller. I don't always use Elite Straps. I do think that they may be better for exercise fitness because they stay in place, but they put a little more pressure on your cheekbones and your forehead. Although this one, even a little better than the metal one, I feel like it's just the extra pad on top really allows you to pull some more of that weight off your face. First early impressions, I feel like I'm liking this a little bit better than the metal one although parts about it feel a little less solid to me. The button, although it doesn't have a lot of play, I mean, it's actually clicking on little clicks. 
the way that it kind of moves on its own if you try and grab it like that. It can be a little distracting, but I like that the joint locks in down. You can still grab the thing from the back and it stays in place. Because of the shape of the back, they didn't make it as round. They made it kind of flat here. It feels like you want to get it further under the base of your skull, which is actually a good thing. That helps you typically have a strap that's more balanced. It can help hold that weight up a little bit, but it feels weird at first when I just tried the metal one because the metal one feels like it wants to be higher up on your head. First impressions are decent though. I gotta go game test, but we'll be back. One week later. Zyber Elite Strap, kind of an upgrade from the Meta Elite Strap in many ways, although it's a bit more jiggly. You just kind of notice things inside make more noise. Padded top strap. These always feel a lot better on your head. They just balance the weight a little better. It's got the side arms that allow you to pop the front up. The gear has less slack in it. The gear feels nice. The back of the head pad is flexible, just like the metal one. It's nicer for a better price. If you're really wanting an elite strap right now, I would say this is a decent one. Seems to have the same flexibility. Hopefully that means it's gonna last. It's always hard to tell in these early days, but the fact that it's surviving even that, is a good sign at least. It's easy to get up out of your face. It's got a wire management spot here, which I actually found helpful with their own neck battery strap because I was able to put that there. But even like if you're using the PC link cable, it just gives you an easy way to kind of get it back out of your way. So it's a nice touch. Definitely, if you're someone who's into elite straps, I will leave a link in the description that will lead you over to this in case this is one you're interested in. It's not what I'm gonna use, but it is one that if someone said, hey, what's a good elite strap? I'd say the Zyber one seems solid so far. Bobo VR M3 Pro, battery pack in the back. Already did a full review on this one, so we won't be stepping away to do any testing. I'm just gonna run you through it real quick. Most comfortable so far a Quest 3 can be. Feels really good, feels like the old M2, and actually it is. The old M2 brought forward, they even sell a conversion kit that you can swap out just this piece right here that takes it from your Quest 2 you had, saves your money and gets it on here. Best comfort, and the Mr. Tass here still fit. Biggest problem that I've been having is sometimes the batteries are great. They add an hour, hour and a half to the battery life. They aren't quite like they used to be where you could hot swap them all day, but sometimes we had weird battery discharge issues. I'll leave a link at the end of this video in case you missed what's going on with batteries, because it's not just these other old batteries if they're too low wattage, battery banks that you've just had forever, or sometimes Meta's own Elite batteries are just randomly dying. There might be some battery issues and some things that are coming in updates, but this strap is still my go-to head strap right now. It's still super comfortable, but I am watching to see if Bobo makes something else or makes some bigger batteries that might run better with the Quest 3 itself. For now, it's my go-to, but I'm still not totally recommending go buy this one and this one only until we find out exactly what's happening with the batteries on it. Just like the old days, you put this on and it just feels like a familiar old friend. Makes it easy if you wanna pop it up out of your face. But the thing about a Halo, if you've never used one, because of this piece here, the weight rests on your forehead. The facial interface isn't even necessary. It's there to block light now, but some people are rocking the whole thing like this and just having it float out in front of their face like the Quest Pro did. One thing that I would normally have in that case, so you should probably bring back the Velcro strap that was included that I took off because that'll help it not bounce around as much. Halos for me, ever since the PSVR original, are my favorite kind of strap. So I like this one. I just wish I knew what to tell you about the battery right now, but we'll keep you updated. Apex in controller hand straps, basically copies of the metal ones. I have not gotten the metal ones though, so I can't say for sure that they're exactly like them, but the way that they work, they replace the whole wrist strap, replace it with a little bracket like this. They replace the battery door as well. Comes with this piece, little tiny hole on here. I will say that's probably the part I trust the least. It's this tiny bit of plastic and this hole on the cloth that's kind of near the edge of the cloth. But the idea is that goes in through there. Should pretty much fit in the hole they've made. You gotta be a little careful here because it wants to go down here. You need to hold it up in this hole as you put this on. And then if you've done everything right, it should actually look pretty seamless here. If you see there's like a big crack here, but it's still staying shut, you probably have some of this overlapping where it shouldn't. This goes through here and you've got an index style hand strap. It will get wet with sweat, but it's a little more sweat resistant style of fabric. So it's good for fitness games, active, anything where you're throwing stuff, you can just let go. It does completely replace this. I don't actually know if this is a thing, but I remember somebody asked me before the quest came out, could you possibly do something where you like use the wrist straps still with it? Cause they like the wrist straps, but they also want the hand straps. You could probably wrap this around this, put it through here. So if you really wanted to still have wrist straps, now I've got a wrist strap and a hand strap. I don't see where that's really necessary because for me, I can let go, I can do whatever I need to, but if you really want to be able to drop it and do something and then come back, 
it's possible to keep the strap. Early impressions, I'm really liking these. It adds a little bit of texture to this back here. The battery door has a little more texture than the original one did, which I like. Obviously, that's not the part of the grip you're really holding on to. It's still slippery on other parts of your hand, but these just feel nice. They feel light. They work well with the controllers. I like that they're part of the battery doors. We'll talk again after some testing, but initial impressions on these ones, I'm liking these. The following Thursday. These are the grips I'm living with for now, for sure. I'm really liking them. They feel good on your hands. They're comfortable. They have some flexibility to them, so they don't ever feel like they are cutting into your hands. They don't ever feel like they're bothering your circulation. They have these like perforated ridges almost to them, which actually kind of reminds me of the new Apple Vision Pro head strap and how they say that's for heat dissipation. So maybe that's something too, because I noticed when I was using these in fitness games and stuff, they felt good on my hands. They felt like they were breathing. The way they're designed and hooked in is pretty good. I do feel like changing batteries is kind of a pain with them when the time comes, although you're going to be pretty rarely changing batteries it seems like this or if you're using a dock like the one with the wireless charging that we got it works through here so you don't have to worry about that because there's not all that extra silicone stuff in the way so at least for now until i get a chance to try the metal ones that are similar and see if maybe they're a little bit better designed i'm digging these they just feel good with the controllers i'm happy with them there'll definitely be a link in the description to these west's own charging dock comes with the lightest batteries you've ever felt. I gotta get the scale. The 1.5 volt batteries that came with the actual Quest, doesn't say the milliamp hours, although typically double A's are somewhere between two and 3,000, sometimes higher for higher capacity. 22 grams, this rechargeable battery, 13 grams. So you're actually gonna be doing a weight reduction on your controllers. As I said in another video, these things claim to be 167 milliamp hours. So that's like a 10th of the size of a normal battery. Although we know the controllers don't take much battery and they're thinking if you're putting them in here every time, they're gonna be wirelessly charging every time. That's probably their thoughts there, but that is tiny, tiny. Installs in there like a normal battery. And weirdly, it doesn't provide its own battery. It's just supposed to just wirelessly charge right through it. So we're gonna try it with our grips here. Oh, look at that. They actually give you a nice long cable, about six feet, maybe a little longer even. A little surprise when you plug it in, there's no sign that it has power anywhere on it. It's just completely dark. Controller with an aftermarket hand strap that is not Meta's own. There's a sound to it too. I don't know if that's just the sound of the controller vibrating or if the controller's making an actual sound or the dock is. Okay, that's definitely the dock making noise. It's a nice, pleasant sound. I gotta say, I like that. I reverted one back to the stock controller too, just to see in case we had any problems with the other. Now this part, anything? Oh, didn't have it seated all the way. A cool thing about this feature for people who use batteries, now, unlike the Quest 2, most of the docks use the USB port with a magnetic charger, which meant if you had something like this, you were unplugging it, shoving their thing in, putting it on, taking it off, and it was just work. But now that it uses the three like the Pro does, I can just drop it on, hopefully. I'm not trying really hard to get this in the right. I wanna see for the average user, if you just drop it in, is it gonna do it? I wonder if it's wanting to lean back hard, no? It's kind of strange. I feel like with the Bobo strap, this kind of makes sense. I can put it like this because the Bobo strap can stay standing. I feel like if I didn't have this on, if I had the stock strap, I feel like wouldn't the whole thing just kind of fall back? Okay, okay. It was yellow. Because like this should be made more than anything to work with a stock strap. Okay. It's fine with also having the battery pack. It's just a little... It's a little harder. You have to shove it in a little harder than you'd think. Let me revert to a stock style strap real quick though, because I do want to test it with a stock one for all those people. And since we have one here in the lineup anyways, let's just do it with this one. You know what that means. Well, something we're learning. Initially assumed that you'd have to buy these two things separately. I didn't think they would just get you the facial interface and the strap together, but I guess it makes sense that they do. Essentially, just a colored version of the stock one. We got the alternate facial interface, which I'm excited about because I feel like I'm going to break that one at some point with how much I'm taking it on and off. Stock style strap, drop in test one, no go. Okay, the lesson is with this, unlike most things in life, don't be terribly gentle. You wanna land it in. And they made it this way where it has this give so maybe that makes sense. You just wanna bam. Contrary to what I thought, I was worried it would kind of fall back, but the stock strap is so light that it's not trying to fall over. It does beg the question, will some straps that have a big battery in the back, but are solid sides, will they try to do this number? Gosh, I really wish I had Meta's Elite battery strap right now, because theirs is solid sides like that. Like, I almost wonder if it's gonna be an issue to where it's gonna do this number and you're gonna find it not charged. But so far, the this with this is a bit more finicky than I'd like it to be. I'll report back after some time with full testing. 
the controllers, I feel like you can just basically drop them in any which way and they're great. But this, because it's contact to contact, it's not wireless, it's being a little finicky so far. 10 seconds later. The blue or orange strap kit that comes with the facial interface as well. I would deem it not worth it. It's that same stock head strap, which I'm saying replace immediately. Unless for some reason you just really want the color or maybe you're someone who uses the stock head strap a lot because you like to lay back and watch stuff you don't like plastic. It's fine for that. And just because I have it, I am rocking the blue facial interface because I think it looks nice. And my original facial interface, I've taken on and off so many times, I feel like it's gonna break any second. I wouldn't go buy one of the colored ones or recommend that you do, but if you're really into it, they're the same as the stock ones. So that's that. And if you really want one, that's that's up to you how you spend your money. Much later. The charging dock. Now, it seems like a cool idea when you first try it up. Controllers wirelessly charging on there is nifty, the sound it makes. The biggest problem I'm having with this thing, and part of the problem right now is I do have the silicone cover on here, but even if I pull it back, it's finicky. Sometimes it lands perfect. It's not always just a drop in. Sometimes it drops in okay. But what I found is if you're rocking like the meta own strap, and this thing isn't on a perfectly level surface, like when I had on the carpet, then it the weight was leaning it back. It needs to be on a level table. It needs to land in there just right. And and for me, I do want to keep this light blocker on here. I'm going to have to like trim it down in here and try to take it off because that tiny bit of silicone is typically enough that it stops it from wanting to charge because the silicone gets in the way. It's just adding this little bit of width right here that's interacting with this piece. So I'm going to have to cut that away. With that, how finicky it is, the price that you're paying that's a premium on this, for now, I'm not going to recommend this charging dock. And some people may disagree on that. They may say, oh, but it's great. I haven't had any problems with it. My experience so far, especially using alternate head straps and stuff, is it's just overly finicky. And I know every time I go to set it down, I'm gonna be like, and it's not charging right now. There's just gonna be other aftermarket options, especially that likely use these three dots still, keep everything charged up for you. Yes, it's fine, because these are always charged up and ready to go with these tiny little batteries in here. But if you're someone who doesn't put them back on there every day, doesn't think about it, and you end up with dead controller batteries, you're gonna be back to switching out batteries. I just think if you wait a few months, there's gonna be better options for this. So I personally am not recommending it. Apex in nose light blocker made to work with the stock facial interface. Basically, if you've used the Quest 3, you know, down here, a lot of you around your nose, a lot of light can get in through that. So this is supposed to go on here and kill that light bleed. Looks like a pretty straightforward design the way they've done it. It just kind of slips over the bottom, adds these nose flaps onto it. And it doesn't really like snap on anything. It's just kind of held there by pressure and gravity. So I'm thinking when it goes on the Quest, it's hopefully gonna hold on now as it goes in, it's gonna stay in place. So it will require you to be a bit more particular every time you do take your facial interface off. Although most people aren't taking theirs off nearly like I am. Still seems to snap in just fine. Is it better? Yes. Is there still light bleed? Yes. The problem is now way in here, there's a little bit of light bleed. Right there, there's still a little light bleed on each side. This will differ for face shapes, different nose sizes. I don't have a very big nose, so I do find I get a lot of light bleed sometimes where people say that it's not as much of an issue. But if I do pull the headset down on my face, I mean, it's almost perfect. If I go like that, it's a lot more, but it is close. If you're really having a problem with the light bleed around your nose, this actually will kill a lot of it. And it does become non-removable. Once you actually have the facial interface snapped in, it does stay there. I like that about it. You'll feel these on your nose, but if you've got other headsets that have these kind of things or other facial interfaces that have these kind of things, that's pretty typical. You're used to that already. Eight bucks for the addition, it seems so far. I'll come back after I've tested it a bit more, but so far I am liking this one. Several song-filled hours later. This little $8 addition to cover up the light bleed around your nose actually was a very welcome addition. I enjoyed having that on there. It really did cut some of the light bleed. Felt good on my nose. A couple things to consider though, certain stands like this that are depending on this being a small thickness back here, it's gonna block this up and make these charging docks not work as well. Another consideration is obviously the next thing we're gonna talk about was the silicone cover that I also paired up with it, but there are silicone covers, facial interfaces that will come with their own version of this. So this may be a moot point, but if for some reason you like the facial interface the way it is, the cloth feels fine to you, you just wish you had a little less light bleed, this actually works well for that. So I'll leave a link to this one in there and it's like eight bucks, which isn't bad. Silicone facial interface cover made for the stock facial interface here. These things are always a bit tricky. Although if you had a Quest 2 and they recalled the original facial interface, their solution was to basically send you one of these. So you're probably used to dealing with it. It's got a little lip back here, which I like. So if you get it right, it should hang on to this. It shouldn't be popping out back there. It's a lot of shoulds though. These things, once you get them, 
them like you feel like it's close, you kind of just have to give them a nice little massage from all different angles until you found that it really all has landed where it should. I did also get their Apex Inno light blocker. So I'm gonna toss that on there while I'm at it and just check all this out again together. Now we're all siliconed up. Oh man, I do like that a lot better. Initial thoughts, I it feels good on your face. I prefer silicone over the cloth that they've done. The cloth is a little irritating to my skin, although this will breathe less. So you will probably have more issues with fogging up of the lenses. I'll do testing and come back, but ultimately I'm probably hoping to replace the entire facial interface. But for now, this silicone is probably staying on. This feels nice. And with that light blocker paired up now, you've also got less light coming in. These two together feel like a decent upgrade actually for your face, your comfort, the way it feels, the hygiene of it all. Yeah, I'll be back though. A little longer than a few minutes later. The silicone cover that covers the outside of the facial interface, but does not have the light bleed blocker in the middle. Felt just like if you've had a Quest 2 and how they sent them out later or the newer ones came with it. It was great for me because it covered up this, which I have not found my skin just does not love this over time. I don't get like a rash or irritation, but just rubbing on there, especially if you have an elite strap that's like putting the pressure on, I don't like the way that feels. So I like the silicone better. This is nice. But again, something to consider here is if you want this and you want something that blocks the light around your nose, there is one that we actually reviewed here coming up next that does both of those in one. So if for some reason you don't want a light blocker and you only want a silicone cover that covers this, this actually worked well, stayed on. I really liked how it felt on my face. Think about that though, if you are gonna replace the facial interface even with the Oculus upgraded one, that one has its own silicone and you'd end up with a second facial interface that in case you broke one, at least you'd have two. So something to think about, but the price is pretty low. So I'll leave a link in the description in case for some reason you want this. Our Geek VR sending us basically a combo of the last two items, which I showed you the silicone and the light blocker blocker now you got both in one here interestingly this has a bit more of the flower petal design so this might be better for light blocking we'll see but typically when you see that design it helps accommodate more nose shapes and sizes oh, freaks me out every time still kind of getting the same light bleed right in here but again I feel like if I had a bigger nose it would be perfect it's close though it really feels like a combination of these two and the silicone actually when it went on it was holding on quite well. I like that. Once you snap it in, it kind of locks in these edges down here behind. So it's actually holding on to it a bit. I'm waiting for facial interface replacements, but for now, this is good. I like the feeling of silicone way better. You'll probably have fogging, like I said in the last bit, but I'll get back to you after I get to test this some in some active games. For now, this is a nice combination of having both and a lot less light bleed. Three days later. The full silicone cover with the built-in light bleed blocker. I'm liking this one. This one's got the silicone cover that's covering that face pad that I'm not in love with. It's doing a decent job blocking the light. Still see a little bit, but it's definitely much better than stock. It stays on really well. It feels good on my face. So for now, this is the one that's gonna live on my quest, at least until I replace the facial interface itself, maybe with that silicone one directly from Meta. But for now, I'm liking this. One consideration, if you are someone who's gonna use this charging dock though, I would probably either have to switch back to the other silicone one that doesn't have the light blocker, or maybe what I'm probably gonna try to do, these parts down here aren't as necessary. It's really up here that you need. I might try snipping these a little bit shorter because what happens is these have to be back for this to land on the charging dock fine. There's other issues with that, but if you were someone who had this and you love it, this part probably would get in the way. So think about that, but there will be a link to this one for sure, because it's gonna be the one I'm rocking. All right, we got the front shell cover. I thought this would go around a little bit further, so I'm not as confident this thing's gonna stay on and in place like you'd want it to. It kind of has a very small silicone lip. A lot of the old Quest ones at least went behind here to hang on to something a little bit stronger. This really just has this little ridge that's gonna get around the plastic, and that's gonna pretty much be it. Volume button's still accessible. IPD slider's still reachable. Most importantly, and the reason that I ordered the one I did, you want to make sure it's got these slots all around it because the venting happens through those slots. You need to have air moving through there. I'm usually not a huge fan of these silicone front covers because usually they're ultimately kind of useless if you really need some extra protection to make you feel safe. But the problem with this one, even initially just looking at it, the cameras still stick out the farthest point. Those are the point you're most likely going to break is the glass on the front of those cameras. If it even had like a little silicone nubs in the in the edges here that stuck out a little further, I'd be like, oh, this might be worthwhile. But right now, if you drop this, you're hitting these. You're not hitting the silicone itself. You're saving, you're protecting the top and some of the edges, 
but a straight down drop, still a good chance you're gonna hit one of the cameras. It does give it a little bit more grip, you can feel it. And it is vented for the heat, but I, I do worry that it, the silicone itself is going to hold in some of that heat, because if you touch the Quest, even though the air is pushing the heat out, the front of it still gets very warm up here. So that's just gonna hold that heat in a little bit. Some people might like the look, they might think, oh, this looks a lot nicer, but I am surprised at how well, once I really got all the edges rounded on the right, how well it's holding on right now. I didn't expect that. It's already feeling toasty. We'll test it out with some toastiness and we'll come back at you. One hour later. Silicone front cover. It hangs on better than I expected. They really did make quite a lip around the edge that holds on well. It does have the vents. The only reason I think with this one, if you're really worried about a little extra protection around the edges, or if you just liked that it looked different, maybe. But between the fact that it's retaining more heat in the top, the fact that it's not really covering the one part I think could get damaged if you dropped it, which is your outer sensors and lenses, I would just deem this not worth getting. I would hold out and wait, see if they make some plastic shells, something that sticks out further around here to protect the front end this to me is not necessary and especially if it's holding in heat just not something you want to add any more risk because there's already a ton of heat pumping through the quest 3 so don't need it Zyberneck power bank. I already spent a good time testing this out when I was doing that battery testing video where we were having problems. So I can tell you confidently, this is one of the only solutions that worked. It is 18 watts. It's not the most convenient battery in the world because I'm used to batteries being on the head strap. But I will say, even in testing and playing it, I was surprised at how little it got in the way. Keep it on your neck here. And when you're playing, this cord sometimes is want to touch you in the neck. You could try to find a way to hook it up here with the Velcro strap it comes with. But ultimately you need that freedom to be able to turn your head. And sometimes in past I'm even seeing this. Obviously I have it forward right now. You'd probably put it backwards, but I found when I had it backwards, it was touching my face more and distracting me. So I'm not in love with the design of this battery, but so far, as far as preserving battery life, making your quest last way longer, this is one of the few options out that works. I do wish that it came with a couple batteries because it'd be really nice if it had like a battery charging dock and you can hot swap and it has that feature to take it off. But why does it have that feature? if there's not a second one. Like I can take this out and charge it with the USB-C on the edge, but then during that time, I'm having to rely on this. And then if this starts to die, I gotta go grab this quickly. And it'd make a lot more sense if it came with alternate batteries. But for now it works, it keeps you charged up. So if you're interested in that and there's not another solution that's better, this is one that I can say will save your battery life. You're seeing a lot of Apex Inno. Apex In, you know? I actually bought all these myself. They didn't send me anything, but I was just like, I need Quest 3 accessories. I went on Amazon, looked at what was out there, and there's a lot from this brand. This is meant for the stock strap, similar to ones that we've tried before that were typically round. This one has a little bit more shape to it. It's meant to help alleviate some of the pressure spots and just overall give you a bit more comfort. Just kind of cups the back of your head. I feel it on all edges, but it does balance that pressure actually pretty nicely. And surprisingly, it's about as easy to adjust it as it was before. Things like this I typically don't recommend because there's head strap options. But if for some reason you want to like lay down and watch movies in bed, or you want to use this with flight sims where you can lean back, these are decent options. They allow you to still have that soft head strap. You don't have a big battery pack or something in your way. I mean, at this point, we've pretty much covered this whole thing in freaking silicone now. So it does also provide, I guess, kind of a look if that's what you're somehow going for with all the black. I'll play with that in some games, lay back, feel what it's like and get back to you with some final thoughts, but I've tested tons of these things with the Quest 2. It's an improvement from the stock strap, but for me personally, I'm always like, why don't you just get a different strap? You are gonna be spending some money on this, especially if you spend it on all this too, but we'll talk about it again. The next day, this weird looking plasticky silicone bit that hooks onto the stock strap. If you are someone who just wants one of these, maybe for traveling, you use the stock head strap, maybe you go on planes a lot and you just need the Quest to break down smaller than it does. This is a nice addition to the stock strap. It really helps redistribute that weight around the back of your head. It feels good if you're laying back and leaning against it. There's a couple different designs. This one was the coolest looking one that I got, but there is ones that are rounder that don't have these edges. It's fine. It does its job completely and I can't knock it for any reason because it really hangs on and it does all its thing. It's not something I'm personally going to use, but if it's something that interests you for any of those reasons I mentioned, I'll leave a link in the description for you in case you want to get one of these or maybe some of the other ones that are like it. We are back to silicone style grips, grips that have battery doors on them and hand straps and a bit more of a surprise here where this isn't attached like it was on other ones. But let's take a look. These are AMVR grips. Obviously to install them, they replace your own battery door. They do allow you to use the stock wrist strap if you wanted to. Although once you have something like this, I feel like there's not usually much need. It's very odd to me that this isn't attached. This tab is meant to go in behind the battery. So that way later on, if you're trying to get the battery out, it's easier. 
because you can just pull and then get to the battery. So there is a couple of attachment points. So where that battery door added this little notch here, that now slips through the silicone there. And then this piece in theory should slip inside the plastic here. It's not the most comfortable hand strap, surprisingly. Like it's it's just silicone, but between the battery door and this one point here, it's holding. It would be nice if they'd made some way to do another one on this side, but obviously nothing reaches over there. This is still just stock controller, but it would be nice if there was one more of these over here, because then I'd feel like even this part's solid. But so far, confidently, you may not have much issues with slipping. We'll test this in some beat saber though, because it feels like if you really got to gripping, maybe it's going to be an issue, but it's more intuitive and a smarter design than I expected. They've made the best out of not having a tracking ring they can just attach things to. They obviously can't cover any of the infrared lights here, and they left a hole for the infrared light too. So pretty well thought out. And I know you're thinking, but this battery isn't in there right now. Well, actually, if you have a normal battery in there and you put it in, it'll show the green light if it's connecting. So yeah, you're definitely not gonna be using the dock with any sort of silicone grips, I will say. One hour later! The AMVR grips, silicone grips, cover, replace your battery door give you the battery door that pops out and lets the battery out. I will hand it to AMVR for figuring out very quickly, pretty much ahead of the market, a grip that holds on to these controllers since there's so few places for it to hold on to and does a decent job. Personally, these aren't living on the Quest 3 right now because they're not what I'm gonna continue using, mostly because this buckle right here just got to me when I was playing. Like pretty instantly, I found myself pulling this around, moving it. It just dug into my hand and it didn't feel good. It wasn't terrible and certain different hand shapes might feel fine with it or maybe if you left it looser, but I just really found this thing kept digging in and bothering me. But I was impressed with how well crafted this is, how well it stays on the controller no matter what you're playing and it works in those respects. But for me personally, it's just not the grip that I wanna use. I think that as these evolve though, I would keep an eye out for ones, maybe ones like we're used to that add a little bit more weight, a little bit more length to the controller and maybe have some of the padding back here instead of this kind of rough knuckle buckle thing, whatever you want to call it. They do a pretty good job of hanging on. They don't block any of the infrared lights. So I was impressed with how well these work for how early we are in the game. They're just not for me. VR cover known for covers that cover all kinds of VR. I guess it's in the name. This is their cloth covers that go over your facial interface. As opposed to the silicone ones, these are meant to be cloth because these can absorb sweat and oil, and then you can swap them out. Mostly known for kind of fitness stuff, stuff where you're gonna be getting sweaty, or people who care about hygiene a lot because you can throw these in the washing machine and just wash them. I like that there's a couple of them that they've provided because that's always helpful when it comes to being able to swap them out if you're doing an exercise program like every day in your headset. Well, like most of the VR covers, they're not terribly easy to attach. You have to do them a couple times so you really figure out like, oh, that's where that's supposed to land. And you will get better at it over time, but they are a bit finicky sometimes for my taste. I don't envy their task of having to figure out how to make covers like this that work on all these different things though, because that sounds like a nightmare. It is meant to just cover over the front of it. It doesn't wrap completely around like on the top. This is really just meant to create a barrier between your skin and the facial interface. And it is soft cotton. It's a lot less scratchy than the stock interface. I'll give it that already. For people who want it to stay breathable, not have the silicone, help them a little bit with the fogging and actually keep the sweat out of their eyes. Cause with silicone, it doesn't absorb the sweat obviously. So it all just rolls down your face. This will catch the sweat for exercising. It can be a nice addition. It's tickling my nose a little bit under here, which I guess is to be expected. And it doesn't do anything for the light bleed cause there's no cloth under there. So you still have the same amount of light bleed, but I can rock that in some Beat Saber and see how it does with sweat absorption and stuff. Get back at you. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. The VR cover face covers felt very familiar. I got in and played with them. They did their job like I thought of soaking up sweat. Although the fabric didn't feel as nice once it started to get a little moist and it started kind of giving me the same vibes as the facial interface. Sometimes I have this weird pain if certain thing is irritating my skin. It's like a stabbing needle suddenly, which I had several times while using this. If you're someone who's used this before and it doesn't bother your skin and you like that it soaks up the sweat while you're playing and you can switch them off, throw them in the washing machine. It does work as intended for that. For me personally, I've been more likely to put like a sweatband on my head and wear it to try and capture the sweat and then have a silicone cover on here rather than putting some sort of cloth on here. So personally, I wouldn't recommend the VR cover ones this round. They did do a nice thing with the hook. I mean, they are, it is staying on pretty nicely, but it's just not something personally I like to use or want. But if you used ones for your Quest 2 and you loved them, then it's you're getting the same thing again with three here. So you could go out of your way to buy those if you really want them. All right, we got Beat Saber handles or fishing rod handles or whatever you want them to be. Soft, squishy handle here. Of course, something that's not really gonna work with my wrist straps that I have on right now. 
pulls through, this piece would hook through. This is how these are secured now because golf clubs can't necessarily secure to the actual handle anymore. So you do something like that and then you wind it, wind it, wind it. There's probably a way I could have gotten this in there nicer, but I mean, it's secure now. It's staying in there, it's working. Bead Saber gives you an extra little handle, makes it feel more like a Saber or Darth Maul mode. Although I really don't know that tracking will work at all with Darth Maul mode in these controllers. All things that we're gonna have to do in testing. I feel like with tracking, these things are gonna give us real issues, so we're gonna have to get into testing these pretty quick. Five minutes later. Didn't take me even 10 seconds into Beat Saber to declare these an absolute no. As Saber handles, all over the place with tracking. Darth Maul was completely unplayable. You're trying to spin around and controllers are going every which way. It's not necessarily so much these things fault as the design. There's no longer the tracking rings that are always in view like there used to be with the Quest 2, but they didn't accommodate that with these and they still made these. So absolute no, don't get these. Anything like these probably isn't gonna work on Quest 3 as it stands. So you're gonna have to avoid stuff like this for now, for sure, until they either make some sort of design that holds the controller in a way that would track it or something different. But yeah, you can see for yourself here in the footage, total crap, not worth wasting your time on. Meta's own carrying case. I like there's a little pouchy now for stuff and it actually kind of locks closed. Headset, stock strap, obviously rocking there. Controllers have their own home. Seems like they want to live backwards. Maybe that's right. So I guess if you were to put your controller in first and then drop your headset in. It feels like it's only the stock strap that's actually wiggling around and so it's holding the headset steady, which I like. Big question, of course, will other head straps fit? I'll do all that in testing and get back at you. Meta's case is solid if you're sticking with a stock strap or with an elite strap. Personally, I already have my strap that I like, which is way too big for this case. As you can see, the case does not fit even without my Mr. Tass ears on there. So for me, I'm not using it. It's a decent case though, it is solid. I like that they did this pocket in there. Somewhere I swore I saw a charging case and I thought this might be that case, but this case does not charge it up. It's fine if it's what you want or if you're gonna stick with the elite strap. So if you're on the fence about it, I'd say it's okay. It's expensive well, for a case, but it does the job. There's just other cases that I want that will fit what I want. So I'm not gonna use it. We got a Sarlar carrying case here. Comes with a microfiber cleaning cloth. Apparently microfiber cleaning cloths need to be a vacuum sealed these days. I didn't know that. This thing, it really, I don't know why I feel like this should be the bottom, but I think this is the bottom. Just like the first case we checked, none of these are made for these kind of aftermarket straps. So of course this thing is not gonna even come close to fitting. Yeah, but the idea of this one is instead of those nice nifty holes in the middle and that little holding pouch that came with, basically it looks like your controllers would go in here. And I guess let's at least see if it accommodates an elite strap. Oh boy. Mm. Elite strap fits. It's definitely cozier with an elite strap in these style cases than that. Feels. Decently strong. I don't like to limit myself to elite strap only cases. I like something that can fit a big halo strap. But if you are someone who knows you love an elite strap, it looks like this case will do the job. I don't love this thing. This thing is finicky. Although you don't really need it. This is not necessary. Unless I guess you have someone opening it who doesn't really know what it is and is like, and then goes and drops it somehow. But even that I feel like would be hard to do. So it's basically gonna give you the features of the Meta one at a much lower price. The Meta one though is definitely like, it's hard. So if you're actually worried about it being safe and dropping it a lot, and you are gonna use either the Meta Elite Strap, another Elite Strap style, or the Stock Strap, this is probably the safer of the two, but I personally want a bigger case anyways. A Styrian Aura V2 headset stand, especially a custom JBrat edition with our logo on there, one of our logos at least. This is a stand that I've talked about before on the channel. It's really just beautiful the glow and everything about it. I will say a couple things because this was one of the accessories I had. I love the look of them, but it is technically, it was upgraded actually to 10 watt charging to help fast charge other accessories. But now this power hungry beast wants 18 watts or better. So it will charge it with the USB port on the side, but it will slow charge it. And actually this is normally white here on the bottom, but I have a black one here to match the desk. It does fit the controllers nicely. It holds them on the side. To me, at this point, the Assyrian Aura stands are more about like displaying VR headsets. Like you'll see people get a whole bunch of them and have one for each with different colors on them. It's not necessarily the most functional of the stands these days because it doesn't charge controllers. It's only got the one port depending on what you want to charge, but I still find it to be beautiful. And it is still the one that's always on my desk next to me, it and the Vertex headphone stands, the beautiful colors and everything. They just go with my studio so well. So they are the ones next to me. So I felt like I should mention them. It's not something I'd say at this point, you definitely want to be using for the Quest, especially as more 
aftermarkets will be coming that will have that faster charging, have ways to charge your controllers alongside it. But I wanted to bring it up because it's so pretty and the custom work they've done on these for me just looks so cool. Extremely limited editions. You actually can't get the JBrat ones really anywhere. I have like five of my own personal ones to do something with someday. So maybe at some point as we hit another milestone, maybe I'll send those off to our supporters that have been so great, like all of you. So for now, this is what my Quest looks like. This is what my Quest controllers look like. And there will be more accessories coming. There will be more videos covering multiple. But for now, I'm gonna pack this thing up. Unfortunately, I can't fit my Mr. Tass ears in the current case that I'm using, which is still the Bobo VR C2 from the Quest 2 generation. But with that, that's all the accessories I'm rocking for now. So I'm packed up and ready to go. But I'll see you in another reality.